out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wonder I come alone. You're not too far. So lay down your heart, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless, for all those who strayed. Come sit at the table and come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, the rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow.
While the college and university years can be an exciting time, it can also be a challenging time filled with so many firsts. First time away from home. First time having freedom. First time figure out a sense of identity away from all that was known. Maybe even first time in a new country. After a year marked by the challenges of the pandemic and online learning, we are so excited to be together again. As our campuses open up more, we're filled with hope and anticipation for what God will do through this generation of university and college students. We know that the first month of school is a critically important time. A few years ago, a study called Renegotiating Faith revealed that 75% of Christian students who get involved with a Christian community do so in the first four weeks at their new school. So what will happen in the next few weeks really matters to the future of their faith. The majority of students don't know Jesus. This fall could be the opportunity for them to hear the gospel for the first time and learn how Jesus is relevant in their life. As we step into this influential season, let's lift up students in prayer. This is such a foundational season of their lives. We want to see every student walking closer to Jesus and finding the life that only He brings. That's why every Student Sunday exists. So we can pause and take time to pray for the next generation. They will become church leaders, politicians, engineers, teachers, parents, and so much more. How can we pray for them? Let's hear what they have to say. Please pray for my non-Christian friends who are curious about God and Christianity. Please pray that the first years joining us next year can find a sense of fellowship and community. Please pray that non-Christians would feel welcomed in our communities and safe to explore faith. Some university students go through university without making a single friend. Pray that every student will be able to feel a sense of community on their campus. My prayer request is that God will help me to discern the future He has for me. He will lead me into the right path after university. Pray that we will be able to meet in person physically next year and that we can do outreach activities in our community again. Pray for boldness to lovingly share our faith with our friends, even if it means having difficult conversations. The COVID-19 pandemic has really been damaging the students' mental health. I just ask that you would pray for them and that they would come to know God and just rely on Him during these times of struggle and that you give them the strength to have their mental health improve. Please pray for international students, that they would feel loved and supported as they study in Canada. Please also pray that they would have the opportunity to hear the gospel and have receptive hearts. This September, around 2 million post-secondary students will start or continue studying in Canada. Would you pray for these students today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying for the next generation, that they may take the next step toward Jesus and find life in Him. Well, hi there, my name is Josh and I'm a member of Deepwater Church. Uh, so thankful that you can join us this uh, Sunday morning as we uh, worship God, whether it be online or in real life. We're very glad that you're with us today. And uh, here at Deepwater, we are so glad that uh, we can be a part of your Sunday. And if you feel like um, standing up when we worship or sit down or um, you can do whatever you want because we are less caring about what you do, but uh, more the, of your experience. And we just hope that you experience the love of God uh, today, whether it be online or in person. I'm also part of uh, an organization called Power Change Students. And it's a ministry that helps post-secondary students take their next steps towards Jesus. And we're so glad that Deepwater is partnering with us here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, and um, as you saw in that previous video, uh, we are spending some time just to pray for students as they prepare to step back on campus. And here I am today at Dalhousie University. And on my way here, I passed on some, uh, by some orientation groups. And it reminded me of when I first stepped on campus many years ago. And I had the benefit of being in Christian community. And recently, uh, that renegotiating faith that was referenced, uh, we found that being part of a community uh, in the first six or seven weeks on campus is very important for those who are Christians. And so uh, we just want to pray for that uh, and, and pray that uh, people would be connected. And so I would like you to join me in praying uh, for our students uh, right now. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to, to pray for our students as they uh, yeah, step on campus. Uh, here in Halifax, there are many universities and, 
and colleges, uh, whether it be Dalhousie, St. Mary's, NASCAD, Mount St. Vincent, um, uh, the colleges here. Lord, there's just so many people who are preparing to go back to school. And, and it's our prayer that you would help those who uh, are looking for you to find community to, to journey with. And so, Lord, for those who are Christians, we pray that they will come in contact with Christian uh, students, uh, whether it be part of a ministry like Power Change or whether it be part of a church like Deepwater, I pray that they would be able to find a place where they can call home uh, while they're here at university. And we know that many students are struggling with, with a lot of pressure. And, and Lord, the mental health um, struggles of, of young people uh, have been well documented. And, and we just pray, Lord, for students as they wrestle with this, that they would find help. And I pray, Lord, that um, that we would be part of a solution, uh, that we would journey with people who are struggling with mental health issues. We also pray for those uh, who are seeking to grow in their walk with you, O oh God. Lord, your word uh, in 2 Timothy 2.2 2 mentions how uh, you're calling um, people to be like Paul, uh, to find those Timothys, uh, to help mentor them so that they could pass on what they learn from the Bible. And we just pray that for this coming year, uh, that mentorship relationships will be formed on campus, at churches, for these young people. And it's our desire that they would take that next step closer to you. And so, Lord, we lift up this, this incoming uh, group of, of students, whether it be the first year or second or third or fourth year or postgraduate. Lord, I pray that they would find community in their walk with you. And so I ask, oh God, Lord, in faith that, um, that as, as, a, as a church, as a body of Christ, that we would pray for students. And so, Lord, we, we lift them into your hands and trusting them to this next school year. And we look forward to the great things you're doing. So we pray also in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Deepwater, as you continue to uh, worship today. If you have any questions about um, Power Change and, and the ministry that we do, feel free to reach out to me at josh.wong at pc.com or the church as we, there's a partnership and they'll be able to connect us together. There's also other ministries on campus that I know of, InterVarsity Navigators, other Christian groups. So hopefully if you are seeking Christian community, we can connect you to them. So God bless and enjoy your Sunday morning.
You ever been in church and had one of those moments where something seems to make sense to everyone else and they all feel, they they have all like mm, yeah and you're like ah what I don't <laughs> I don't know what that is I don't know what you're talking about there I'll tell you one of the ones for me just usually it's things people say and a lot of times they're things that have some sort of biblical vibe to them but uh, a lot of times I'll find myself in church and people will say you know like this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm always like well, yeah, but I mean, looking at this day, it can't be his best work. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> the, yeah, like, that's true, but I mean, how, why, that, is that automatically a good thing? I know it goes on to say, I'll rejoice and be glad in it, but I'm like, yeah, I think that's because it's so bad I have to choose to rejoice and be glad. But then there's another one that I, I, I hear a lot of times when I'm hanging out with my charismatic friends, and they'll, they'll say, you know, man, it's like, like deep calls out to deep. Deep calls out to deep. And I'm always like, what does that even mean? Deep, deep calls out to deep, man. Everyone will be like, yeah, deep really does call out to deep. And I'm like, wow. Now, if, if you're curious, it comes from Psalm 34, uh, 3. Or sorry, that's where we're going. It comes from uh, another psalm. where, But it's actually David talking about like pain and despair washing over him. It's not like a positive thing. Uh, now he goes on to talk about uh, hearing from God and all this kind of stuff. But it's just one of those, yeah, man. Deep calls out to deep, and I'm always like, I don't, uh, this just doesn't hit me, I guess, the same way it hits other people. Uh, I'll tell you another one that, that people uh, we say all the time in church, and, and I heard it a ton growing up, and it always just struck me kind of funny. They'd say, let's magnify the Lord. Let's, ma- let's magnify the Lord. You know, ma- let's magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together. And I was like, Mag- how do you magnify God? Like, is, is, I, I'm no theologian, but we learned in Sunday school, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. Like, he's not tiny, you know, he doesn't require magnification. It's like, what's exciting about, like, you guys just know how tiny God is, so let's magnify him and make him bigger, because he's a tiny little God. Like, that, that never made sense to me, but today, we're going to try to figure that out. Because that's a, that's a direct quote from Scripture. So, it, you know, it, it's, it's good. Now we just got to figure out how. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to dive in and try to figure that out together. Father, thank you for the chance to look at your Word. And I just pray that you would uh, help us to understand what it means, truly means, to magnify you. And more than just understand it, that we'd put it into practice in our lives, we pray. In your name, amen. Amen. So when I think of magnification, and maybe you're like me, I think of microscopes. Like when I think of magnify, that's what I think. You put some little thing in a microscope, and I don't know, I wasn't very good at science, but you, that's what I kind of tend to, to think of, you know, because magnification makes tiny things bigger, right? So you take things that are so small that you couldn't, you can, even if you hold them up like that, you can't see them, so you got to stick them in, and then there's like lights and doodads. I don't know how this one works. And then you do this, and, adjust, and then eventually you can see this incredibly tiny thing but we can't make god bigger hey we don't have the power like that's just outside of our wheelhouse we can't change the nature of god in some way he's already infinite he's all the them them omnis you hear about right the the omnipotent and omnipresent and omniscient you know like you study viruses under microscopes not elephants right like you don't have to magnify something or someone that's already like infinitely huge right like we talked about last week he's god without us he doesn't need us to somehow inflate him to to make him bigger to somehow improve upon who he is right and if we think about god uh, and magnifying god like a microscope will it'll never make sense to us like it's a ridiculous concept but there's a different way that you can magnify things there's another instrument that does magnification and that's a telescope a telescope. Telescopes are used to see things that are absolutely massive. Like you don't go and look at specks of dust through a telescope. You're not looking at, at microbes under a telescope. You're looking at things like stars and planets and galaxies and nebulas, right? You're, you're looking at things that are bigger than you and half the time bigger than the, the very planet you're standing on while you're looking at them. We need magnification to see those things, not because they're so small, but because they're so far away. 
because they're so far away. Telescopes take the light of massive and incredibly bright things and focus that light through lenses so that we, can, we who are very, very, very far away can see those things clearly. That's a picture of what it means to magnify the Lord. We allow our lives to be a lens through which the light of God can be seen by people who are far away from Him. We're not making God bigger because He's too small. We're helping people who are far from Him to see Him more clearly. Magnifying the Lord then is an act of worship, but in that's the context we usually think of it from because it came from a worship song from the Bible. But it's also an act of, of testimony and proclamation and evangelism and invitation. We're going to dig into this passage that talks about magnifying the Lord, and we're going to see what it looks like to do that. It's Psalm 34. If you have a Bible and want to turn there, you can. It'll be on the screen either way. This, this word that gets translated, I'm, I'm talking from the old King James version uh, so far. This word that gets translated as magnify is a Hebrew word uh, pronounced something along the lines of gadal. Gadal. It means to make great, to exalt, to honor, to glorify, to, to make much of, to cause somebody or something to have high status. It, it means to tell of the greatness of something or someone, in this case, the Lord. And so you'll actually find in the New Living Translation, which is the one we're going to look at tonight, uh, today, for those of you at home, and it's the one, well, maybe you're watching at it tonight, whenever you're watching. The Bible's the same all day, every day. Uh, we're going to see that that's actually how the, the translators of the New Living Translation translate it. They just go, tell of the Lord's greatness. And we're going to see as we read through this that the way we magnify the Lord is primarily through our songs and our stories. Our worship and the, the ways we talk about who God is and what He's done in our lives. So here we go, Psalm 34, starting at verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. There's your songs, right? I will boast only in the Lord. That's Him telling His stories about the great things God's done. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us... This is in the old KJV magnify. Here it's, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt His name together. I prayed to the Lord. Here he's telling his story again, right? I prayed to the Lord and He answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to Him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. He's talking about what he knows the Lord can do. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. He's telling his story, right? For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. So how do we magnify the Lord? Through our songs, our, our worship, also the preaching of the Word, the ways that we uh, pray when we're together. Uh, but for the sake of tonight, we're just going to talk about this in terms of songs. In our songs and in our stories. You see, worship is for God and to God, but it is also a testimony. It's a statement. You're bearing witness to others around you about who God is and what He's like. You're, you're declaring to other people as well the greatness of God. When we worship and we praise and we thank God, we're helping others to see Him more clearly. We're describing who He is and what He's done. We're, we're helping to paint a picture of who this God is that we love and serve. When we raise our hands in worship, for example, or when we say amen during a sermon, we're saying, yes, that's the God I know. That way you just described Him, preacher. That, that line that was in that song, that, that's the God I know. Yes, He is that way. He is like that. I'm going on record. I'm, I'm adding my kind of amplification to that message. We're saying, yeah, I've seen Him do that. He's done it for me. We're saying, yeah, I know Him too. And that's what He's like. Or I've listened to His Word and that is what He said. We're, we're again magnifying or, or amplifying the truth about who God is that's being proclaimed. One way you can increase the magnification of something is to add another lens. If we took this apart, we'd find there's a lens here in the front 
and then there's another lens back here at the back, and I do believe you'd find a third lens in the middle at least, and those lenses, as they get kind of stacked on top of each other, they increase that magnification. That's one way to do that. And, and your life as a follower of Jesus, your experience, your relationship with God is a lens that can help to focus the light of God and help people to see Him more clearly. So when we engage in worship, we sing out, we lift our hands, we clap when we say amen or hallelujah or preach it or just yes at some point when someone's praying or, or preaching or singing. We're not cheering for the band. That's not what we're doing. We're not trying to, to, to compliment the preacher. Excellent performance, preacher. Good job. Yes, amen. I agree with What we're saying is, yes, I agree with that. We're saying, add my lens to magnify even more the greatness of God. We're not thanking the band. We're not appreciating the preacher. We're adding our magnification to the truth of who God is and what He's done and the truth that's being declared in that moment. We magnify God through our songs, through our worship, through our engagement in our times of worship together. We, we communicate to each other that this is our experience of God. This is what He's like. This is who He is. We magnify Him through our songs and then we magnify Him through our stories. How you talk about God's role in your life. How you talk about Him in your experiences. I have no idea how people can follow Jesus and Him not come up in conversation with other people. I don't know how if, you're, if Jesus is the center of your life, if He's the, the, the one that you've given your life to, if He is truly your Lord and you are following Him, I don't know how you can talk for very long without Him coming up in a conversation, no matter who you're having it for, uh, having it with. I mean, if someone saved your soul and changed your life, and you base all your significant decisions on what he says, and you talk to him regularly, and you're part of this huge group of people, some of them who are your very best friends, some of them who are virtual strangers, but you're part of this huge group of people who get together regularly just to celebrate them and talk about them and cheer about them and, and, and tell stories about them and sing songs to them. Like, if, if that's kind of your life and that's how awesome you think this person is, how does he not come up in conversation with people? Right? How, how, does that, how do you just talk to people for more than a few minutes and it not come up. Like, if you ask me how I made it through my difficult teen years, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me uh, about the family I grew up in and the benefits and maybe some of the baggage I have because of that, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me where I chose to go to university, you're going to hear about Jesus. If, if you ask me how did I wind up picking the career path I chose, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me how I met my wife and how we've been happily married for 20 years, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me how my kids are doing, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me about my mental health, you're going to hear about medication and Jesus. If you ask me why I live in the community I do, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me how I make the big decisions in life, you're going to hear about Jesus. If you ask me what I do with my free time, you're going to end up hearing about Jesus. If you ask me who my closest friends are, you're going to hear about Jesus. If Jesus is Lord of your life, he should be all through your life, and it should be literally hard, difficult, challenging to talk to someone for very long at all without him coming up, without having to tell a story of his goodness, his mercy, his love, his faithfulness, his direction in your life. You have those stories. If you follow Jesus, tell them. Tell those stories to people. Draw attention to God. Magnify him with your stories. Make His presence and His work and His character clear to other people. Connect those dots. There are people looking at your life and they're going, that's a different thing. That's unique. That's, I don't know what that's about. Connect the dots for them. It's Jesus. That's what the connection point is. That's the reason for all. That's how this all works. That's why I can have peace when my life is falling apart. That's why I can find joy in the darkest situations. That's why I don't have to run around looking for love and validation from any random person. That, it's because of Jesus. That's why. Connect those dots for people. Now, 
a lot of us, when we start thinking about this idea of telling our Jesus stories, and I'm not talking about like ambushing people, just it should come up while you're just talking about life, if you're getting to know somebody. Some of us, when we think about that, we get kind of weirded out because we're going to go, people are going to think I'm strange. Like people are going to think I'm weird if just in the course of conversation we end up talking about God. Listen, if you follow Jesus compared to the world around us, you're weird. You already are weird. So you might as well be weird to the glory of God. I'm not saying you need to add extra weird. I'm not saying be a weirdo. I'm just saying, no, that's the whole point. Your experience isn't normal. Your life isn't normal. Your, your connection with God isn't common. The, the ways you make your decisions aren't the same as other people. Your moral code is informed by things very different from other people. The, the ways that you process what's going on in the world and your part in it, that's different from other people. The ways you view healthy relationships, whether you're talking romantic relationships, family relationships, friendship relationships, that's different from the normal people. You are weird, so be weird in a way that draws people to God, that magnifies Him. You were not called to fit in. You were not called to blend in. You are called to magnify the Lord. Your life is a lens through which God wants to help other people see Him. So let His light shine through you in your stories. We interact with people regularly, most of us every day. We interact with people who are far from God, who are a way off at a distance from Him. In those interactions, I just want to challenge you to ask yourself, how can I be a lens to focus the light of God in a way that they can see it? In a way that they can begin to get a picture of who He is? In a way that even at their great distance from Him, they can go, oh, if that's what God, that's, He's beautiful. He's beautiful. He's amazing. He's gracious. He's incredible. So, so sing your songs, at least metaphorically. Tell your stories. I mean that one literally. And then invite them like David did to taste and see that the Lord is good. See, this is the beautiful thing. We need to magnify the Lord because there are people who are far from Him, so far from Him that despite how big and bright He is, they can't see Him clearly. But they don't need to stay at that distance. They've been invited to come close to Him. They've been invited to come into a relationship with Him. That the the sin and selfishness and rebellion that has created that distance, Jesus on the cross did everything it takes to close that gap. And so they're not just invited to kind of look through the lens of your life and, and hopefully catch a clear picture. They're invited to actually come close enough to taste and see that God is good. And so you can invite them to do that when they start going, okay, what is that God? I, I could be interested in that God. If that's, if that's who Jesus is, I might want to know more. You can invite them to taste and see that the Lord is good. Invite them to come with you to, to worship some weekend. Invite them to be a part of your small group. and Invite them to, to read a book together with you or to study a, a passage of Scripture together with you. And invite them to try praying with you, invite them to taste and see that the Lord is good. It's, it's almost cruel if all we do is magnify Him and go, He's way off in the distance and He's amazing. And it stinks that you're stuck way over here far from Him. No, follow up with, okay, if you want to know Him more, if you want to see Him even more clearly, if you want to get to the point where you're not just kind of picking up on the light of who He is from a distance through the lens of the lives of believers that are around you, but you want to be close enough, you can taste Him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Invite them. Invite them to do that. Ultimately, it's an invitation to meet Jesus and to invite Him into your life to forgive your sins, to change your heart. And it's, it's an invitation for them to live now, not as someone viewing Him from a distance, but as someone who has the Spirit of God within them, walking with them day by day, leading and guiding their life. And it's the first step of them becoming a lens with their own stories to tell of the greatness of God, that they can magnify Him to the world around them. So when you're talking to your friend, your coworker, your family member, just don't avoid Jesus. <laughs> don't try to find ways to answer questions that 
oh, I don't want to bring up the God part of things. I don't, I don't want to mention the church dynamic. I don't want to, I don't want to say I just did it because the Holy Spirit told me to. They'll think I'm weird. You know? I don't want to say, well, I could forgive them because Jesus forgave me and I'm a horrible person and, and have them go, well, you're not a horrible person. I go, I am and you are. We all are. Let's, you know, don't, just try, don't, don't be a jerk about it, but just don't try to avoid that stuff. Tell your stories. Let your life be that lens. And as they begin to get a picture of who God is, they're going to want to draw closer to Him and you get to give that invitation to say, there's more. You don't just have to view Him from a distance. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. So come with me. Study with me. Pray with me. Let me introduce you to Jesus. And maybe you'll want to give your life to Him as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much that You put people in our lives who served as a lens to magnify the light of who you are. For some of us, that was parents from our earliest days. For some of us, that was friends or or neighbors uh, later on in our life. People who helped us to see you more clearly. Father, would you give us the courage to do that? Father, some of us, the reason it's easy for us to go a long time talking to someone without you coming up is because the truth is we've got you pretty boxed in and compartmentalized in our lives. You account for an hour on a Thursday night or a Sunday morning in our lives and not much more. And so we're, we're kind of, it's kind of easy as long as we don't talk about what we do uh, you know, at, at church for that one hour a week, we can avoid talking about you. So God, if that's where we're at, would you just break out in our lives? Would you saturate every part of our lives? Would you help us to not just decide what to do with one hour once a week, but all of our hours all week based on you? Father, would you help us to quit trying to keep you compartmentalized in our lives and just let you loose to be Lord all through our lives. Father, I believe there's a a lot of us who, uh, you are that, but we're just nervous to bring it up. We're scared to bring it up. And so we we, we kind of find ways to avoid it when we're talking to people or we we find ways to kind of soften your role in our lives or or your influence on us or the changes you've made in us because we don't want to seem like some religious fanatic or we don't want to make other people uncomfortable. Father, would you teach us how to be gracious but honest? How to not try to beat people uh, up with our story or, or use uh, Scripture as some sort of club, but at the same time, God, just to be super clear and honest and unashamed. I think of where Paul says, I'm unashamed of the Gospel. He also said to, to those who are perishing, it's foolishness, but to those who believe, it's the power of God. Father, help us just to share those stories with clarity and with boldness and with courage, with humility, with honesty. And then God, to do it with invitation. That we wouldn't just be kind of going, you know, na 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 boo boo I know God and you don't. But we'd be saying, hey friend, you can know Him too. You can have a relationship with Him too. You can find grace and forgiveness and peace and joy and love too. You can find purpose and hope too. Just come and check out this God who found me. Help us, Father, to magnify you with our lives, with our songs, and with our stories. And may the end result of that be more and more people giving their lives to you and their lives becoming a lens that can help other people see your light all the more clearly, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on the cross they made for sin Every curse is blood of time. One final breath and it was finished. But 
not the end we could have known. And the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as it had
Hello, my brother. Thanks to God, myself and my family, we are fine. But uh, people are really concerned and afraid uh, in port au -Prince. The whole city has not been affected. I mean, port the port au -Prince area has not been affected because the epicenter of the earthquake is in the south, the southern side of Haiti. And uh, so far, there are more than 300 people that have been uh, killed. Uh, that's what that, that they have found so far, and about 2,000 uh, pe people injured. And uh, for myself and my family, as I said, we are fine, and we continue to be careful. We continue to watch the signs and to trust God. That's all we can do because there are many aftershocks. Like earlier, a few minutes ago, there was enough enough to shock and everybody felt it and a lot of people left their homes and went to the street or went to empty area uh, many people went to uh, or have gone to empty areas because they don't know what's going to happen next but since the big earthquake happened in the south so we also believe that the aftershocks are going to be stronger over there than how it is in the port Prince area so thank you for your prayers so right now we continue to assess the situation and we promise to stay in touch with you and should we need special things we will make sure we keep you informed thank you again for your prayers and say hello to your family and your church and the leadership team of deep water church bye bye It's great to be part uh, of a broader church organization that when disasters strike around the world, we as a church have very direct and immediate ways we can participate. And uh, when the earthquake hit Haiti uh, this week, it was, I believe, the next day that our partners through World Hope uh, they're an amazing relief and development organization. I serve on the board of the Canadian branch uh, of World Hope. We're on the ground making clean water, distributing it to those uh, who need it. And that uh, involvement is funded in part by donations that uh, you have made to Deepwater. And uh, we support that organization and partner with them on these relief and development efforts. And uh, I just love being able to be a part of something like that. Uh, for those of you who are at home, uh, I want to just continue to invite you uh, to come on out live. We're here, and it's great. And uh, there's Thursday nights at 7 o'clock, Sundays at 9.30 and 11. You need to register in advance, but not way far in advance. Just We just need to know you're coming, uh, so we have record of that should uh, we ever need to contact whoever's been here. Um, so yeah, the, the sign-ups for that, you can just go to deepwaterchurch.com and find those. Uh, speaking of opportunities to sign up for things, uh, over this next couple of weeks, you're going to continue, and into September, but you're going to continue to hear bunches of uh, opportunities to be involved, to join different serving teams. Uh, we had actually uh, three people this week who just out of the blue, I mean not out of the blue people, but out of the blue contacted Pastor Jackie, uh, our kids ministry pastor, and just said, hey, I want to be involved, put me on a team, help me uh, get connected so I can serve there. We love seeing stuff like that happen. And so if you uh, haven't been serving for the last year and a half, which is almost all of us because of COVID, uh, and you're looking to get plugged back in, there's a, a lot of opportunities to do that. You can always contact the church if you don't have a specific one in mind, and we'll help you find uh, that opportunity. And if there is a specific area you're interested in and you know who's in charge of that, you can contact them directly. And if there's a specific area you're interested in, but you don't know who to contact directly about it, again, contact the church. We'll get you connected. Info at deepwaterchurch.com is probably your best option uh, to reach out to us by email. Uh, Speaking of those opportunities, coming up on Saturday, August 28th, 
Uh, so for those of you watching at home, this is uh, th this next Saturday coming up. For those of you here live on Thursday night, uh, you're smart enough to come on Thursday night when it's more chill, and you know very well that that's a week from Saturday night. Uh, but Saturday night or Saturday uh, day, August 28th, we're doing a host team training. Those are the folks who help people uh, feel welcome when they arrive. That's really their ultimate goal is to, to show love and welcome and warmth uh, to people as they come in. So they are the folks that would be at the doors welcoming people and greeting them. They'll be the folks helping people uh, to find seats. Those are the folks that once we're allowed again, uh, serve the, the coffee and, and refreshments, that kind of thing. If you're interested in being part of that team, there's a host team training coming up on Saturday, August 28th. All the details and how to sign up are in the loop. Speaking of the loop, if this is one of your first times ever worshiping with us, and you'd like to know more about who we are, what we do, how to get involved, the best next step for you to take is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. It's called The Loop. It comes out on Tuesdays. Any sort of sign-ups, volunteer opportunities, uh, ministries, programs, classes, groups, anything like that that's going on that you might want to consider being a part of, that's all always in the loop. So if you sign up for the loop and read the loop, you'll always be in the loop. And the way to do that... For those of you who are here live, uh, at each of the exits, there's a card called a Connect card. I mean, it says Connect card on it. You can grab that, fill out your name and email address, and throw it in any one of the offering boxes or hand it to anyone uh, of the staff, and we would be happy to see that you get signed up for that. For those of you watching at home, there's going to be a link pop up in the comments presently. And if you click on that, it'll take you to a sign-up opportunity, or you can just go directly to deepwaterchurch.com. And again, as always... Uh, big thank you to those of you who help make Deepwater happen financially, who participate in the mystery, uh, mission and ministry of the church through your regular and sacrificial giving. Uh, we appreciate it. It's what makes this possible. And if you would like to be a part of that team, if you'd like to begin uh, to, to practice the discipline of giving in your life, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. I mean, in terms of the mechanics of that here at Deepwater, uh, there's email transfer, there's an app, there's pre-authorized debit, uh, there's... A, cash or check in the offering boxes, uh, bunches of different ways you can do that. If you go to deepwaterchurch.com slash give, you'll find all that information, and that link will probably pop up in the comments in just a second, too. I want to invite you to stand for the benediction. When we, when we understand how much God loves us, we can't help but love Him back. And when you love somebody that much, you can't help but talk about them. So may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Amen.